I'm Carly. I've been working as an office clerk at my current company for almost 20 years. Over time, my bosses and colleagues have become like family. We all get along, and I truly believe it's a great place to work. However, as I approached the age of 50, often seen as the midlife mark, I began to wonder if this was the life I wanted for the rest of my days. These thoughts were vague. I didn't have clear goals or ambitions like I want to do this or I want to try that. Living with these unresolved feelings, I went about my regular routine. That was until a phone call from my mom back home changed everything. One evening after work and during shopping, my phone buzzed. It was mom. Tarly? Well, your dad hurt his back. He got some patches from the hospital and is resting now, but he can't stand at the shop, so he's taking some time off. Concerned about my immobile dad, I decided to visit my parents the next day. As soon as I entered their house, I heard them arguing. I rushed towards the voices and found my dad trying to prepare some pastries and mom telling him to stop, worried it might worsen his pain. My parents run a bakery, passed down through generations. I'd never seen my dad take a day off. Dad himself didn't want to take time off for his own reasons, so he forced himself to prepare the cream. Even seeing me, he just grunted a greeting and returned to his work. Dad, stop it. You've hurt your back. The doctor told you, right? If you push too hard, the pain will last longer. Then reopening the shop will take even more time. Just rest for now. I exclaimed, but Dad, stubborn as always, didn't listen. However, when he tried to lift a bag containing a kilo of sugar, he cried out in pain and doubled over. Panicking, both Mom and I helped him to his bed. Once there, he admitted I thought I was still young, but age catches up. With the new fancy store in the neighborhood taking our customers, maybe it's time to think about closing the shop for good. Our bakery was popular back in the day, but with trendy stores popping up and online shopping being the norm, it's been tough. The younger generation isn't into our traditional treats. The number of customers is decreasing year by year due to this shift away from Western sweets. Still, I love our pastries. Friends, family, and colleagues agree they're delicious. Ideally, I want the shop to continue, and I couldn't recklessly tell them to keep going. Dad must really want the shop to continue. But at that moment, I felt so powerless. Eventually, Dad's pain lingered for so long that he had to close the shop for about a month. Even when he resumed business, it seemed like he was still in pain as he worked. Seeing this, I wanted to help Dad. After discussing with my husband, Andy, I decided to assist in the family shop during my days off. At first, Andy was supportive, often telling me, it's okay, go ahead. But as I began spending most of my weekends helping out at my family's place, Andy became resentful. Every time I got ready to leave, he would make snide remarks like, you value your family more than your own husband, or isn't it too late for that shop anyway? Aren't you just wasting your time? Initially, I responded with understanding, saying, I get it, I'm sorry. But as this became a pattern, I began to just leave the house without reacting. In response, Andy started to act childishly by hiding the apron I used at the shop or trying to make me oversleep by turning off my alarm. Watching him play such juvenile pranks with a smirk, my love for Andy dwindled. Then one day, things took a turn. Next Monday began one of my superiors, Alan. We're having a client meeting at our office. I was thinking of serving desserts from your family's shop. Would that be all right? Oh, but isn't the shop still closed? If so, don't worry about it. I readily agreed, immediately went to my family's place and bought the desserts for Alan, who had always been a fan of our products and frequently visited with his family. So to speak, he's a regular customer. So, Alan introduced our delicacies to the clients hoping they would love them. As I was working, Alan and one of the clients came to see me during lunch break. This is Carly, the one I told you about from the dessert shop. Alan introduced me out of the blue to the client. Baffled, I met the client Jude who began, sorry to surprise you, my name's Jude. The dessert I had earlier was so delicious. I had to know where it was from. When I found out it was from your family shop, I felt the need to thank you in person. I heard it's a long-established dessert shop. Is that why the flavor is so profound? It was truly amazing. Jude is a long-established dessert shop. Is that flavor so profound? It's amazing. 
According to Alan, Jude is a huge fan of desserts and even goes on dessert hopping with her family during weekends. I never expected someone to personally come and thank me. I was overwhelmed and tears welled up in my eyes. Taken aback by my sudden emotional outburst, I explained to the startled Alan and Jude, I'm sorry, I didn't expect such appreciation. I think Dad would be thrilled to hear this. But I fear this flavor might end with Dad's generation. If you liked it, please visit the shop. Jude surprised asked, are you closing the shop? I shared the circumstances at home and my feelings. If you wish for the shop to continue, why not learn and take over, even if it's now? It's never too late. I have often thought about it myself, but quitting my current job and taking over my family store comes with its risks. And besides, even if I were to take over, I am not confident that the store's sales would recover. I am almost 50 years old, and I don't have the courage to start something new at this age. I don't even know where to begin. It's not just about keeping the store going, and since I have never been involved in the management or confectionery making, I am anxious about whether I can handle it, I said. Jude thought for a moment before responding. I hate lies, you know. Your family's confectionery was really delicious. If possible, I would like many people to taste this flavor, but I understand your anxiety. As we age, we become less inclined to take on new challenges but I believe that it is never too late to start something new. Besides, you were just saying earlier that you wonder if your life is okay as it is now. If you think so, then now is your chance to change your life. Upon hearing that, it was as if a light bolt struck, struck my head. While I said that I wanted to change myself, I never took any action and was just wasting time. Of course, taking over the store is by no means an easy task, and it is inevitable that I would cause trouble for both my company and my family. But now that my children are adults and independent, and Andy is working, things might work out after all. I think you need time to talk with your family, and if you decide on anything, please contact me. I will help you. Jude said as she handed me her business card. It was truly a grateful encounter. That night, I talked to Andy about what happened today and told him that I wanted to explore ways to revive our family's confectionery store. However, he responded with a mocking attitude. No way, you must be joking. Or are you trying to scam someone? There's no way that old and dirty store will become popular again. Besides, recently, you've been using helping out as an excuse to neglect household chores. You should just give up and close the store gracefully, and you should just do the housework like you're supposed to." He said, laughing at the serious concerns I had confided in him. You may think that our store is old and about to go out of business, but there are people who like our store's taste and are willing to support us. If you still want to take over the store after all I've said, then get a divorce first. He looked shocked, even though he was the one who brought it up. Of course, I had my doubts and fears, but after much thought, I was determined to take over the shop. And yet, right from the start, he shot that idea down, made fun of it, and in the end, hinted at divorce just to get his way. Such a narrow-minded man, no thanks from me. Later on, he embarrassingly yelled, You know what divorce means, right? I calmly replied, You are the one who suggested it after thinking it through, right? I've thought about it, and I'm fine with it. Bring the papers. Seeing the hit to his pride, Andy's face turned beet red. The next week, he really did bring the divorce papers, shoving them in front of me. If you sign this, we're strangers. Are you sure about this? I had made up my mind. Silently, I took the papers and signed my name. Perhaps he expected me to hesitate because he looked completely stunned. Yes, we are now strangers. I'll submit these. Let's discuss the details through our lawyers. I said grabbing my packed bags and leaving the house. I went straight to my parents' house and explained the divorce immediately. I went straight to my parents' house and explained the divorce and its circumstances. They were both shocked and a bit angry. I think our marriage was doomed from the start with a man who, instead of being supportive, opposed everything and bad-mouthed me and my family. It was bound to break down. It might be late, but I still love the taste of our shop and want to continue it. I will study hard, so please let me join the business. I pleaded. Eventually, my parents agreed. Soon after, I filed the divorce papers. 
We divorced without any division of property or compensation. Until the end, Andy warned, you'll regret this. But I simply replied, if I regret it, it's none of your business. And we parted ways. Juggling work in the family business was challenging for me. From developing new products, introducing machines, managing costs, promotions, and various other tasks, there were moments I felt overwhelmed. But each time, Jude was there to help and support, introducing me to various business contacts, helping me stay afloat. Trying to increase our online presence through social media was tough since neither my parents nor I were familiar with it. But after months of consistent posting with the help of my daughter, Layla, who is an expert in social media, we began to see an increase in likes. Still, Layla wasn't satisfied. She said we needed to go viral. When I asked her what that meant, she explained it's when something becomes a hot topic on social media. Wondering what could possibly make us go viral? I tried sharing our daily life, like preparing pastries and uploading videos of mom reviewing them. While we did get likes, we were far from going viral and I realized how hard it is to suddenly become a sensation. One day while I was busy with office work, I got a call from Layla. I called her back during my break and an excited Layla said, Hey mom, the video of grandpa the other day went super viral. Confused, I asked, what do you mean? It turns out a video of dad interacting with a neighborhood dog was getting a lot of attention. People found the interaction between grandfather and the dog endearing, saying not only was the dog cute, but the joyful grandfather was even cuter. I never imagined he'd become famous this way, but thanks to that video, we started to attract younger customers, and Layla, sensing an opportunity, uploaded a short video of her dancing with dad, which also became a hit. Our shop became more famous for dad than our pastries, and we started to see customers occasionally asking for a photo with him. Later, we introduced adorable pastries themed around animals and plants, seasonal limited edition pastries, and even low sugar options for health conscious folks. As a result, our sales gradually but surely increased. When business started to pick up, I left my office job to focus solely on the bakery, actively participating in its management and pastry making. While I couldn't match the expertise of my skilled parents, I was genuinely happy to work alongside them in the bakery. We also started a mail order service, leading to orders from distant places. During busy times, even my children would help out, and our business grew. Dad, initially resistant to new things, was overjoyed by the results. The last time the shop was this lively was when my own father was still alive. Carly, thank you so much. We are truly blessed to have such wonderful daughters and grandchildren, he said, bringing me to the brink of tears. After that, a local TV station found us through social media and offered to do a feature on us. We were also featured in a popular national magazine as the shop to watch. As a result, more and more customers started coming in. And just when things were starting to pick up, an incident occurred. It happened when I was tidying up the store to get ready for closing. About 15 minutes before closing time, a man rushed in shouting, Is Carly here? That voice sounded familiar. I thought, could it be? What do you want? I responded coldly, feeling uneasy. Carly, how have you been? I saw you on TV the other day. Seems like you're making good money now. Man, I'm so proud. What do you want? I responded coldly, feeling uneasy. You still mad about what I said back then? It was just a joke, right? But okay, I admit I said it wrong. How about we forget about it and start over? I'll be your successor and help with the business. Sounds good? I refused immediately, shocked at his proposal. What are you talking about? Why would I ever want that? You hurt me deeply back then when I was truly struggling and even suggested divorce. I'd never marry someone as petty as you, not even for all the money in the world. You said I'd regret my decision, but I don't. In fact, I'm better off without you. Plus, taking credit for your ex-wife's success is just pathetic. Let me make this clear. There's no way we're getting back together, and absolutely no chance. Now get out and never show your face in my shop again, I shouted, chasing him out with a broom. Clearly not expecting to be thrown out, left yelling, you'll regret this. A few days after Andy's visit, there was an increase in false comments on our shop's social media. Accusations like, this place used expired ingredients in their cakes, and their kitchen is filthy and infested with cockroaches. They deserve desserts, 
made in such conditions. Layla would always refute these claims, but then they'd quote her and make even nastier comments. Despite reporting these accounts, they'd come back using different profiles. Eventually, I decided to consult a lawyer. After some digging, we identified the culprit behind the false claims. As you might have guessed, it was Andy. Through our lawyer, we informed Andy that we were aware of his actions. We warned him that any further slander would result in legal action. Subsequently, Andy deleted all his social media accounts and stopped making any comments. You'd think that was the end of it, but there was more to come. Though Andy stopped making negative comments on our shop's SNS, he apparently created fake accounts to continue his vendetta. Layla discovered this and showed it to me. Do you think this could be Dad? That's how we found out. There were posts bad-mouthing someone without naming names, but clearly referring to me. Among those posts was a melodramatic one saying, where did I go wrong in life? It gave me the chills to think that a man nearing 60 would do something so petty. Layla captured screenshots of Andy's social media account and shared them. She then explained the baseless claims made by the individual and our loyal customers rallied behind us. Making unfounded claims about unsanitary practices won't gain anyone's trust. After a while, Andy's fake account faced a social media backlash and in panic, Andy deleted that account. However, someone managed to extract personal information from Andy's social media account and astonishingly, the phone number of the company where Andy worked leaked out. The company then started receiving silent calls and prank calls making fun of Andy. Naturally, the company got wind of how this all started. While younger employees who used social media were buzzing about it, the senior executives angry about the company being identified were quite stern with Andy. Even if Andy wanted to switch jobs, it would be tough due to his age, and now he is treated like a pariah by his colleagues. You may wonder how I know all this. Well, a few days ago, Andy called me crying, shared the details, and in his usual self-centered manner, asked me to help him save face. Honestly, I keep regretting why I ever fell in love and married such a man. Of course, I declined all of Andy's requests and blocked his number. Now, what design should I go with for the new product? I pondered, trying to put thoughts of Andy behind me.